from a lecture given in 2010 at an event in Campinas, São Paulo, Brazil. We presented the video lecture entitled, Strategy for Better Development with Superior Genetics, which advise you to first see it on our website, betterproject.com, if you have not already done. And from this lecture, originated four propositions. Online platform for the registration and searching for betas. Watch on our website the video with this same name for more details on this subject. As for the online beta genetics course, can be accessed through this same website betaproject.com. As for the document on the patterns of colors arrangements, descriptions of lineages, and betas shapes, we have the video lecture, betas analysis, classes and patterns for the evaluation into specialized exhibition, where we define the groups in which can fit any beta in a specialized exhibition, as well as, we show the types of failures that must be observed in each phenotype to better finding the requirements of excellence within each of these groupings, or trial classes. The last mentioned proposal in this early lecture, refers to the base document for the quantification to structural failures in the beta phenotypes, be it during an evaluation in a specialized exhibitions, or in a particular evaluation of a given matrix used by us in a selection work. To do so, it establishes clear criteria for tiebreaker situations, to define the final placement of the bettas inside each pertinent class. In the case of specialized exhibitions, given the huge quantities of the exposed bettas, as well as, the number of judges involved in the evaluations, there is a need to have a software, that receives these points, provided by the judges. In addition, provides fast for every beta, which the placement within the relevant classes, if first place, if second place, or third place, or even the settings of the best bettas, in the best in show. Of course the philosophy embedded in this software is the same that guided these forms. I am Vedar Khalil Chivita Rasi, amateur creator and scholar on the beta genetics for many years, and I am sure this lecture will be very useful. Evaluate a beta is not a difficult task. However, can be a little time consuming because requires attention to various details. Note this document made by us. It consists of two worksheets that will help those who wish to evaluate a beta in any presented scenario, be it in a specialized exhibition or in the case of needing evaluate matrix Wanda to use. These worksheets are available on our website. Each worksheet will be printed on either side of a sheet and each one will be designated to each beta evaluation process and of course will be designated for each judge who participates in the evaluation process. Thus if in an exhibition we have 100 bettas and 3 judges, organizers will provide 100 sheets for each judge, a total of 300 sheets. As there is little time during a show, for the judges can evaluate all bettas, their only concern will be to assign the lost points for each failure observed for each beta into their respective sheets. And just this. The summaries of each beta and made by each judge, and the beta's final classification, will be made by the support software program, to be developed by us, and that will be available on the site. We will now analyze the parts of each worksheet, assigning lost points for each failure. Let us look at this part of the worksheet. Why is it necessary? As time is short to judge properly all bettas on the show, first the judges will observe if the bettas are with good health if it has temperament, and if there are serious structural failures, or even, swimming with difficulty, shaking itself in some cases. Moreover, to make it easier, let us review what are these declassify failures, very serious fouls, that have already been shown in the movie. That is analysis, classes and patterns for judgments in specialized exhibitions show without postural balance in the aquarium. For example, present the caudal peduncle fallen relative to an imaginary horizontal line through the mouth until the middle of the caudal fin as if there was a weight that forced the caudal peduncle down. Presenting bumps or recesses in the body. 
presenting steam belly, in males, or females without oocytes. Presenting ruffled scales. Presenting swimming bladder disorder. That is, by observing the beta, it does not present its longitudinal line from the mouth to the middle of the caudal fin, horizontally, and bent over and hanging down to the caudal peduncle side resembling a boo. As if the beta was always looking at the surface, preparing to an imminent jump, the so-called, jumping bettas. Presenting any kind of swelling in the eye, in the mouth, in the gills, or eroded fins, or with fungus or lack of scales, or presenting white or golden inflamed dots, etc. Presenting asymmetry, front or side, in the gills when expanded. Presenting asymmetry between the pectoral fins, or between the pelvic fins. Presenting at least one twisted fin. Presenting the absence of at least one of the fins. Presenting disproportionate dorsum, remembering, or a rhinoceros concave dorsum, or a dolphin's convex dorsum, or sometimes remembering a moray dorsum. In this way the judge can be compelled to declassify such beta, and it must write in these lines the reason, or reasons, that did it to take such an extreme attitude. However, it may be that the beta does not display for some judge, preventing the same can evaluate it. One example, there are three judges in the exhibition and one of them disqualified certain beta because, during his observation and analysis with it, the beta did not display itself, and after many attempts by this judge, he failed in displaying it. Therefore, the judge moved on in the trial of other bettas. However, the other judges were able to evaluate it because it gave a chance for such. It displayed properly with the next beta for example. You should keep in mind that the beta is judged at a given time, and just in that time. If during that given time, in front of the judge, it stays discouraged, as in our example, but, after the judge went on to analyze other beta, that beta returned to display, that way, allowing for a possible evaluation, will depend on that judge to return or not for judging him properly. Remember that is a prerogative of the judge turn back or not. In the case of that judge remain adamant, the composition of the final note for that beta, that is, the total of lost points, will be the sum of the points deducted by the first judge, with points deducted by another judge, which really can have evaluated properly that beta, divided by two. However, in cases like this, that is, with at least one judge cannot assessing the beta, always will have the chance for an appeal on the part of the exhibitor which feels wrong, in the organizing commission of that exhibition, and, for example, it can happen in other evaluation for that beta by the judge. However, if the condition of partially evaluated was maintained until the final report, then will appear the word, elim, meaning eliminated, in the cell of the corresponding role of this beta, with the column of the respective judge, or in the cells, in the case of more than one judge. And because of that, even if that beta can have lost less points than another which had all evaluations, it will not be able to compete for any prizes offered for that exposition, in any category, even in first or second or third place, and much less to the best in show. In the case of all judges eliminate that beta, such condition will appear in the classification report of that exhibition, with the beta assuming the maximum lost points. However, if all goes smoothly, let us move on. Let us now understand this part of the worksheet. In these frames, the judges quickly will indicate which type of beta they are analyzing. If it has short fins, or long fins. In other words, if is a placot or a long fin. Or if it has only one caudal lobule, the so-called single tail, or if it has two caudal lobules, called double tail. If the beta does not have, or has, great spikes on the edges of the fins, that is, whether the beta is not, or is, a crown tail. If the beta has a body with great mass, accompanied by a rather large size, that is, if the beta is giant, or not. 
if the beta has the pectoral fins with normal size or not, and, in this case, what size would have these pectoral fins, the so-called Dumbo, or Big Ear. Continuing in another frame just below, the judges will point what kind of colors distribution the beta presents. If it has a single color in the body and on the fins, the so-called solid. If it has a color on the body and another on the fins, the so-called bicolor. Or if the beta is a multicolored, and in this case may have a random distribution or any, the so-called AOC, any other color. Or if the beta is a dragon, or a salamander, or one of the other's multicolored distributions, with the known and enshrined colors distributions over time by the creators showing themselves well stabilized, the so-called special multicolored distributions, or special AOC. In this case will fit the black orchid, the black copper, the black devil, the pineapple, the chocolate the mustard gas, and the red gold. For further information, by the way, essential to the full understanding of this work, I advise you to watch our video, Betas Analysis, Classes and Patterns for Judgments in Specialized Exhibitions. Now let us go into the frames of the worksheets in which the judges will assign the lost points for each specific failure from the phenotype. In this first frame, the judges should concern solely with the beta aesthetic balance and will mark the lost points that they find more convenient, as specified in red, on the document itself. We have the items. Aesthetic balance itself. Relationships between body size and the set of fins. It features balance. Or not. If it presents, of course does not lose any point. If there is any imbalance, in the concept of the judge, the analyzed beta may lose from 1 to 3 points. However, why does it need this 3 points range? Because, this way, the judges can differentiate the different imbalance degrees among competitor betas. This criterion, the range of points, is always applicable for most attributes in these worksheets. Note that, we excluded from this analysis, in this regard, the bettas with disproportional pectoral fins, the dumbos and big ears, for obvious reasons. Their focus is exactly this aesthetic imbalance between body size and the pectoral fins, and for this reason, the dumbos and big ears will be assessed in an item specifically prepared for this purpose. Later we will return to this subject. The next item refers to the widths of the dorsal and caudal peduncles. Let us start by evaluating the dorsal peduncle. This may be wide, characteristic of double tail bettas, with peduncles from the order of 22 rays, and of the good single tails, with up to 18 rays, or narrow peduncles, characteristic of less work bettas dorsal, with peduncles approaching of the wild single tails, those of 10 to 12 rays. For this reason, in the wide peduncles, those with 22 rays, found in the double tail bettas, or 18 rays, found in the best single tail bettas, there is no loss of points. While in the narrow peduncles, those with 10 to 12 rays, there is a range of points so that the judges can differentiate, and better evaluate, in the case of the single tail bettas, those more selected, which it will facilitate in the tiebreaker. As for the caudal peduncles, may be wide, or narrow. The wider caudal peduncles can support better large caudal, long fin bettas, and it should be more encouraged in the lineages. And therefore, do not lose point. While the bettas which have narrower caudal peduncles should lose point. Let us look now the caudal surfaces. May have many folds in caudal tissue, the so-called rose tail, or a few folds, or even no folds resembling the surface of a fan. The bettas with many folds in tissues, resembling the folds of a curtain, are bettas with high ramifications in the tissues of the fins, which is the result of genetic selection works, therefore highly valued on the market, and as a merit matter, such bettas will not lose points. For those bettas with few folds, or even none in caudal tissues, we must deepen further our analysis.
whether the betta on trial is a placat or not. If the betta is a placat, flat fins belong its own nature. And for this reason, we understand that it should not lose points too. However, for the long fin, this may result in the loss of points, once more, others less. Let us look at the caudal shapes. Maybe old formats, or delta formats. In the old formats, we have the veil tail. Or ponytail. And rounded tail, resembling the shape of a fan. In the delta shapes, we have the super delta, the half moon, and the over half moon. As an example of justification for the ranges of points shown in these worksheets, let us come back to the veil of tail shape. We can see that there are veil tail, and veil tail. And that applies to all items analyzed in these worksheets. As it can be seen, it will depend on every judge, how many points will be removed from every beta. If they were punctuating them, in this regard, the veil tail, they would not take away points from this veil tail. They would take away one point from this one, and they would take away two points from this one. Another fact we must keep in mind is, if there is not such concern in examining separately the betas colors distributions items from those relating to the shapes, in this case, the veil tail, we would be tempted to mix these concepts, and don't take away points from this veil tail, and penalizing this for example. As it can be seen, it is a laborious task which requires a lot of responsibility and knowledge on the formats and colors distributions by the judges. The next field refers to crown tail shape. Inside this field, only will be evaluated the relationships between the tissues and the spike sizes, and if there are flaws in these spikes. Let us start by analyzing the relationships between the size of the tissue and the size of the spikes. The bettas may have small spikes, where there is a relationship between a long tissues and small spikes, in some cases, almost not featuring as a crown tail betta. Those with fins featuring tiny tips on all the edges, the so-called comb tail. Or it could have a close relationship to one, or equal, where there is a balance between the lengths of tissues and spikes. Or it can have crown tail bettas with tattered aspect, with little length and tissues of the fins and huge spikes. Let us examine now the integrity of the spikes. If they are integer, or without defect, be they straight or warped, or presenting any defect, absence of spike, or if they are broken, or even if they are twisted, resembling a corkscrew. The next item will analyze the double tail bettas. Here, the judges will worry only with both symmetries between the two caudal lobules, and between the dorsal and anal fins. Again, I advise you to watch the movie, Betta's Analysis, Classes and Patterns for Judgments in Specialized Exhibitions, for further clarification. The next item concerns the bettas with exacerbated pectoral fins. Here, the judges will worry only with the length of the pectoral fins in relation to body size, as well as, with the symmetry between these pectoral fins, in both categories, Dumbo and Big Ears. As we have two specific categories for this kind of format, the Dumbos and Big Ears, the judges must be in meeting in advance to decide how they will classify every exacerbated pectorals beta, to prevent future conflict between these assessments in this regard. That is, if the beta is Dumbo, or Big Ear. In other words, this procedure must be followed to avoid any judge compare wrongly a Dumbo beta with a Big Ear beta, and this manner penalize the Dumbo beta. The next item concerns the giant bettas. Here the judges will consider three aspects. The first aspect concerns the amount of body mass. If less than two times the body mass of a common beta or if more than two times for both formats, placat or long fin. Another aspect refers to the size, or length, of the giant. Here we have two variables. One relates to placat, and the other to long fin. 
Finally, the judges should observe whether the betta's body shape resembles with a common betta, because there are giants with weird formats when compared with those with which we are used to seeing in common bettas. Again, I advise you to watch the movie. Betta's analysis, classes and patterns for judgments in specialized exhibitions for further clarification. However, these measures and references later should be discussed among the creators, in such a way to bring for it more clarity, because, from all items so far presented, this is the one with more subjectivity in its bulge. For example, what should be considered as a normal reference in terms of body mass. In addition what would be an appearance that does not resemble with the common beta. In our online beta genetics course, we aim the whys of such occurrences, and we give suggestions of how to choose matrices, in order to decrease the emergence of individuals with weird formats in litters of giants, be they giants or not. Until now, it just has been evaluated the health, the temperament, and the better's formats. On the back of the evaluation worksheet, there is the requirements that should be observed with regard to color distributions, that is, whether the beta is solid, if it is bicolor, or if it is a multicolored arrangement. And in this regard, should be deepened the analysis for knowing if the beta has a special multicolored arrangement, or if it has a dragon arrangement, or if it has a salamander arrangement, or if it is one of those multicolored bettas with a special colors arrangement, namely, the pineapple, the chocolate, the mustard gas, the black orchid, the black devil, the black copper, and the red gold. Let us start by examining what must be observed in solid and bicolor bettas. Let us start with the solid arrangement. In this regard, the judges will analyze the number of the tonality existing in beta. We can have solid bettas with the single tonality. In this case, the beta does not lose any point. Or we have two tonalities acting in this color, for example, dark yellow body and clear yellow fins, which will lose one point. Again, I advise you to watch the movie. Betta's analysis, classes and patterns for judgments in specialized exhibitions for further clarification. The remaining items are common both to the solid and bicolor arrangements. They are the color of the pectoral fins. They follow the same color of the other fins. Or they are without color or having a different color from that of the other fins. The quality of the mask displayed. If exhibits a full mask, or a partial mask, or presenting no mask, or exhibiting any mask with a different color from the rest of the body. If there is, or not, infiltration of other colors, on the fins, on the body, and the most serious, if there is the presence of marbling or red loss. Now let us analyze the multicolored bettas. I think you noticed that does not exist in this part of the worksheet the possibility of analysis of the common multicolored bettas. That is because there is no possibility of comparing colors arrangements that by themselves are unique. This class of colors distributions was included initially precisely to allow at this point of the lecture this kind of discussion. Therefore, in our vision the common multicolored bettas should not participate of bettas specialized exhibitions. Such color category should not exist. Let us explain. As this work is based on the premise that a reliable betta show is prepared to evaluate matrices for using in reliable stabilized genetic works involving color distribution and the best works format too. It is important to note that any common multicolored beta cannot be used as matrix to reliable genetic works. Therefore, this worksheet does not have fields to assess the common multicolored bettas. On the other hand, these common multicolored bettas only must be assessed with regard to questions concerning to formats, only by fraternization among the common multicolored beta breeders, for example, the best half moon, the best giant, etc. However, even awarded, these bettas do not be used as matrices for works that require stability in colors arrangements. For this reason, we will examine only the special multicolored arrangements. Let us start by the special multicolored arrangement titled Dragon. 
Here we will observe the mask type. If there is marbling and or red loss. And if the pectoral fins have the same color as the remaining fins. However, we also must look, and this is the reason why this special multicolored arrangement is evaluated in a specific class. The scale type displayed by the beta. If presents a slightly convex appearance due to the increase in the center of the scale the deposit of cells due to the high rate of mantle opacity. Or if they are flat as those present in non-dragon betas. The quality of the iridescent mantle itself. If it is continuous. Or showing flaws. Another important point with regard to the quality of the dragon arrangement refers to the behavior of the strong opacity in phenotype. If it is restricted only to the beta's body, that is, only on the mantle, or if there is also a whitish dust over the fins, or if the strong mantle opaque also advances as if it had leaked over their fins. The next special multicolored arrangement to be evaluated is the so called salamander. In the same way as in other types of multicolored so far analyzed, the presence of marbling and or red loss, as well as the color of the pectoral fins in the same pattern shown in the other fins, should be observed by judges. The salamander color arrangement on the phenotype is well characterized or not. That is, the color's distributions on the body and on the fins are in accordance with the salamander patterns or is already starting to deteriorate. However, in the same manner we made for the dragon class, the salamander class will be evaluated separately in a specific group due to the presence of color on the lips of the beta, following the border color of the fins, the so-called lipstick, if it presents or not. Again, I advise you to watch the movie, that is analysis, classes and patterns for judgments in specialized exhibitions for further clarification. Finally, we will assess the other special multicolored arrangements. They are grouped on the same category, called special AOC, because they do not present any specific detail for being evaluated separately. And in the same way as the other multicolored should be observed. The mask quality, if there is or not marbling and or red loss, as well as the coloring of the pectoral fins. For the color arrangement itself, if it is well defined in the phenotype or if it begins to mischaracterize the arrangement. Now imagine that all the judges already assessed the exposed bettas and they delivered the film worksheets to the event organization that, in turn, forwarded to the people responsible for loading all this huge data quantity in the beta classification system. Remember that, by the volume of data generated, only a computer program can define which bettas will rank themselves within each group, and in which order, be they related to colors distributions classes or format classes. Because there are many bettas, some judges, and many points in each worksheet to be accounted. Of course, I am referring to a reliable exhibition committed and to disclose to exhibitors the judges' evaluations for each beta, in such a way that the exhibitors can study them, and of course, improve their genetic works. Continuing. Although the judges will worry just in assigning points to faults and beta competitors, we now expose the technician tiebreakers that will be embedded in the computer program of analysis of the judges' results, in a way that everyone can knows what we think about it. We have two large sets of classes in which all bettas can be fit. Those concerning to the formats, and those concerning to the colors distributions or colors arrangements. Let us assume that there is a tie between two double tail bettas. Both lost one point each in this item and we want to know the tiebreaker to be applied on them in this class. The first thing to be observed is, obviously, how many points each one lost within the aesthetic balance item. The one that lost fewer points in this item will be better placed into the class. Before going any further, let us introduce a concept we call, wordness factor. What could it be? Any beta competes always in more than one classes related to shape. And always in one, and only one, class linked to color distributions. For example, this beta is a long fin, 
single tail, crown tail, and dragon. Therefore, this beta will compete in the classes. Long fin. Single tail. Crown tail. And dragon. That is, in four distinct classes. This beta can lose points in those four categories, and beforehand, we know how many maximum points can be lost on every one of them. Just add the maximum amount of points that a beta may lose within each item. So, we define as weirdness factor of a given class, the division of lost points by the beta in the evaluation of this class. By the total of possible lost points in this class. If we add up all the weirdness factors of that beta, and divide this number by the total resulting of weirdness factors number, we will have the total weirdness factor of that beta. We can observe through the weirdness factor that the long fin and single tail formats or the placot and single tail formats are evaluated together through the aesthetic balance item. Therefore, we can initially be concerned only with these classes. In the same way we treat together the placot and long fin when we evaluate since the double tail class until the multicolored salamander class we will have the same treatment in the single tail class. However, once chosen the betas in those 13 classes, where certainly we will have placot and long fin among those classified betas. We will point the best placot and the best long fin inside the set of 39 betas because it makes no sense of something better among exposed betas out of this set. However, for a while, we will work with 13 classes and the best in show with their three places for both males and females. However, at the end, we cannot forget, we will have 15 classes and 90 awards not counting the six prizes of the best in show. Back to the weirdness factor. To understand visually what means this factor, just think about the following. A perfect beta over a given item will not lose any point when evaluated in this regard. So, as there is nothing strange about it in that regard, its weirdness factor will be zero. However, the more fouls the beta presents, the more points it will lose, and worse, or more strange, will present itself, and the weirdness factor will tend to 1. Remember that the weirdness factor is defined as the division between the number of points lost by the beta in a given category, and the maximum points that the beta can lose in that category. In short, the lower the weirdness factor, more harmonious it will be the beta. While the higher this value, so much worse, aesthetically speaking, it will be this beta. Therefore, we have until now to define the best beta within any class the following rules. 1. Obviously, less loss of points in a given category. 2. Less points loss in terms of aesthetic balance. 3. Lower value in the total weirdness factor. Finally, if the tie still persists, to search how many points the beta has lost in the total. As anyone might note, it is impossible to do manually, and in a timely fashion, such careful review, unless throw hand of a computer program. Making a summary of that we comment until now we have the following. We describe the evaluation worksheets that will be used both by the judges during their assess in a reliable exhibition committed and to disclose to exhibitors the evaluations for each beta as by the breeders to assess a particular matrix who wish to use in their selection work. We define the set of classes for fitting any beta including the placot and long fin classes. We created the technical tiebreaker criteria among betas into a specific class to define the best beta in such class. So, let us start by treating the best in show definitions. How to determine the candidates, males and females, for such honor. I see only one way, only the winners in each class is that can compete for the best in show. As the name suggests, we want the best of the best. Here we ran with a complicating detail. As shown, the same better can always win in more than one class. 
for example, a bit of wine in classes. Placot, single tail, and crown tail, but also, it is a dragon, and in this regard, he was much underrated. Can you imagine this better being considered the best placot and the best crown tail, and the worst, can you imagine this better being the best in show? It would be unimaginable in any of the cases. Therefore, we see that for a better B champion in any class, it is not enough that it meets the criteria already laid down. It cannot have two, none of the other categories in which it was docked, a loss of points greater than 20% of the total possible points lost within the category. Thus it will guarantee that the champion beta in each class and in the best in show, will present exceptional harmonious set. Therefore, assigning now the maximal values of losses in tiebreakers in each class, we will have 1. Less loss of points in the class in question. Which means to the crown tail. Double tail. Exacerbated pectorals. Giants. Salamander. And special AOC. Such loss cannot be greater than one point. And for solid. The bicolor. And the dragon. Cannot be greater than two points. 2. Less loss of points in terms of aesthetic balance. That too may not be greater than two points. Finally we will introduce another criterion, the merit accuracy, which will contribute to the definition of the best in show champions. In other words, there is class with 50 competitors, while in another, there is only 5. Both classes provide their champions, however, these champions have faced different hurdles to conquer their titles. On the other hand, there will be better who won in three classes, while another better won in a single class. Therefore, the beta who won more competitors, won the largest number of classes, and lost fewer points in the remaining criteria, certainly have primacy over the other champions in the race for the best in show. We translate it in an equation, we call it merit value, to graduate the degrees of the various champions of the classes, which are the natural candidates to the best in show. Is the sum of the number of competitors in the first class won by a beta, divided by 1 plus the number of points lost by this champion beta in this class, plus, etc., plus the number of competitors in the end class won by the same beta, divided by 1 plus the number of points lost by this same champion beta in this class n, all this times the number n of classes in which this beta was champion. However, we cannot forget that all these calculations will be transparent to the judges. These only will worry in assessing the bettas and deliver their worksheets to the coordination of the exhibition which will introduce these data in the program. The rest will be done automatically by this which will indicate the winners in each class, and in the best in show, taking into account all considerations shown throughout this work. However, both the number of points as the respect of intervals shown in the worksheets only serve to measure the gravity or weight of each of these failures. Only this. And for this reason, even after ready the program, these numerical values can be modified, however, remained untouched the criteria and philosophy detailed here. Well, I stop by here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Until the next lecture.